Welcome to Return of the Obra Dinn. This is a game where we explore the ship, the Obra Dinn, which disappeared at sea for a while and then finally showed up again with a bunch of dead bodies on it. <laughs> so it's up to us to figure out exactly what happened on the Obra Dinn. It's made by Lucas Pope, which you might recognize as the person who made Papers, Please. And yeah, I think that's about it. it. came out, I think, a year or two ago. It's been a while. I've always been meaning to play it since it came out. Heard really good things about it. Finally getting to it. Let's jump in. Also, the menu music is amazing. Let's begin a new game. I played for all of five or ten minutes just to check settings and things like that. Also, there was a demo released for this game, I think years ago. M many, many years ago. And I remember playing that, so I have some vague idea of some of the things we can do in the game, but that's about it. It was just a demo. It didn't really spoil anything. Don't worry. Lost at Sea, 1803. The good ship, Obra Dinn. Built in 1796, London. 800 tons, 18 foot drought, drought? Captain R. Witterell. Crew, 51 men. Last voyage to Orient. Cape Rendezvous, something. The Honorable East India Company, Attention, Chief Inspector, Insurance and Claims, London Office. The Oberdin has returned. Dispatch to Falmouth immediately and prepare a full assessment. <coughs> Company man woke me up. Said you'd need ferry to the Oberdin. Not many eager for that job. Seems a bit late, if you ask. I didn't. Huh. What's in the box? I don't know. Hoist it up in a few minutes. Hey! How? Carefully. has a very interesting art style, as you can see. Oi! It's too heavy! It's too heavy. Take it yourself or open it here. So here we are introduced to the mysterious book. Return of the Obra Dinn, a catalog of adventure and tragedy, 1807. Preface. I trust that you now find yourself aboard the Obra Dinn. I expected this day to come, and my every intention was to tell the ship's strange tale within the pages of this book. Regrettably, Failing health has allowed me to produce only the basic outline that follows. Your presence on the Oberdin is critical. I leave the discovery of its fate and the completion of this book in your hands. The next few pages will seem bewildering at first. 
All will make sense in time. Use the pocket watch to determine the identity and fate of everyone aboard. Complete each chapter accurately and return the book by guaranteed post to the French Office of Affairs in Morocco. The bargain chapter will remain unknown to you. I possess the details within, but have elected to keep them private for now. Henry Evans. Okay, so there is a lot to this book. <laughs> it is very long, and it's up to us to fill out most of it. I just flipped through it before when I was testing out settings and making sure the game ran correctly. And the stuff in this book makes me so excited. Oh man. I feel like there's a kind of current of paperwork that kind of runs through both Papers, Please and this game. Obviously, Papers, Please involves paperwork a lot. One of the main things you do is look at and do things with, accept or decline paperwork. And here, it's our job to basically write a book. And also, we're ostensibly here at the behest of an insurance company who wants us to assess the ship, right? But isn't, isn't this all a bit strange? If we're just an insurance person assessing the ship, then why did we have some boxes that we didn't even know what was inside of them? And why is there a book that has a preface that we've only read just now? Talking about trying to tell the tale of the Oprah Din. This is something completely different from just being here for insurance reasons. Like, there's something really weird going on. So, let me just take you through some of the things that I saw looking through this book. Uh, most of these chapters, actually all those chapters, are completely empty. All right, chapter one, loose cargo, nothing there. There's like this on the cargo deck. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Part of the outline, I guess. But for the most part, it's empty. However, the beginning few pages contain a lot of information that's not empty. Things uh, like blueprints, I guess. Not literally blueprints, but blueprints of the ship. A map of the journey that we've taken, and we can click on all of these and make them bigger and really investigate them. So this is the route that it took. Um, where did it start and where did it go? I f forgot. I'm not sure, but it either went to or came from here. One up here, around Cape Verde, Canary Islands, Madeira, and then ended up here. Full map of the ship. Oh, how many floors does this have? What's the... Orlop deck, gun deck. Main deck. So that's where I'm at. That's what's up the ladder, right? The main deck. I don't know anything about ships, so sorry. <laughs> Captain's quarters, passenger stuff. Yeah, and this is... I. This must be the top, and these are just one floor down, and then one floor down, right? Gun deck. Orlop deck. And the store. It's also complete crew and passenger manifest. Everybody's name, what their job was, where they come from. And I guess it's my job to figure out their fate. And also figure out who is who. So there's a picture of everybody on board the ship. And, oh, multiple pictures. And yeah, we need to figure out exactly who they all are. Like, this is so cool. This is so my thing. I'm so excited to fill this out. And yeah, this is that picture that we saw. The couple pictures. Oh. I didn't notice this. Justice at sea. They throw them out in the water with a bag on their head? So they just drown? Oh, wait. They're firing guns at them. So they just hoist them up and execute them with guns? Yeah, so that's the main information that's filled out right now. Uh, there's some stuff in the end, though. The glossary? Anything here? Oh! Are these locked right now, or... I can read them all? No, I can read them all. So I can figure out exactly, like, what exactly is a gun deck or an Orlop deck. 
what exactly does a does a mate or a gunner or a purser do? Cool. That's the back of the book, I think, or well, the last page of the book. Very creepy symbol. And uh, yeah, it's really easy. I can just press a single button to go back to the table of contents if I want, and then flip back to the back cover if I want. So pretty easy to maneuver around. And then the left and right or A and D buttons just go forwards and backwards on pages. Feels pretty nice to navigate it. And then we have this thing, where things get even weirder. A very odd pocket watch, with the same creepy skull on it that was in the book, and it allows us to... I think it's like, go back in time, basically, just as a witness. To be able to see what happened? That's what I remember from the demo. This game looks fantastic, by the way. It's a very interesting look that I've never seen before. It's a little bit harsh on the eyes, but they obviously put a lot of work into this to make it readable. Like, make, make sense to the eyes. Being able to tell depth and objects and things like that. So we use it on the first body. This is where I ended my little 5-10 minute playthrough messing with stuff. I haven't done this part since the demo years and years ago that I barely remember. So this is right where they died, and this is the person who died. I believe? Just got shot by, I think, the captain? Looks like they don't have a shirt on, they're just in their, like, long johns or whatever. Got an axe in hand. Is this... Is this like how we leave? Oh, does it just... We go back with time? So we start at the end, basically. Oh man, I love this. Who is this? How did they die? Well, I mean, they were shot to death. That must be how they look like in the picture, so I should find them in the picture. Right? That's the person who was killed? Yes? Outside the captain's quarters. This is the dialogue. Captain, open the door, kick it in. Lest we break it down and take more than the shells. You bastards may take exactly what I give you. And they gave them a bullet. That's where the corpse is. On the main deck. Others. Oh, it highlights it for me. Others were present. So that. Um. Hmm, this is unknown. Which one's the captain? It's it's hard to tell. I mean, they look like they're wearing much fancier clothes than, say, this person. So is this one the captain? Unknown. This person's face is no longer blurred, which means that they can now be identified. Use the book and the pocket watch to gather enough information to deduce their identity. Revisit memories on the ship using the pocket watch to study relationships, appearances, and activities. 
every time I skip the dialogue to the next bit, it makes a little like plink plunk in the music. It's really cool. Use the book maps, crew manifest, and artist sketches along with the individual com. Oh, I didn't get to finish it. There were 60 people on the ship when it left England. Determining everyone's identity and fate will not be easy. Decisive information is rare. You will have to make assumptions using partial information. Some identities may only be revealed through a process of elimination. Good luck. Hmm. So... I can select who I think they are. What if I get it wrong, though? Is something going to happen? Like, is the game going to just reject it as an answer? But then that would allow you to get the right answer just by brute force. Maybe... Maybe you just won't know if you got it right, for sure. Maybe it'll just let you pick the wrong answer. Memories where this person appears can be navigated from here. The soul appears in one memory. Bookmark all memories where they appear for quicker navigation. God damn, this is complicated. <laughs> I don't feel like I understand how all this works together yet at all. So wait, is it up to me to bookmark things? Just did it for me? Depicted injustice at sea sketch. Yep, so that's them. Oh. I didn't mean to go out of the book. So somebody's just running away. Oh, I can walk through them. They have a knife in their mouth. So they have... I'm not exactly sure what that's called, but some sort of, like, black powder pistol thing? Fl flintlock pistol? I'm not sure. It's hard to see them. It's a little bit hard to make out exactly what they look like with this art style. I'm sure that was taken into account, though. Given that, like, 75% of the game seems to be identifying people. Hmm. I could go through the person up there, going to the upper deck, but I can't go through this person. Let's go back to the book. Hmm. Uh, wh where is that exactly? Is that inside of the chapter? Ah, oh, it is. It's inside of the chapter, the end. So it's, that's not actually the end end, but this is the beginning, part one of the end. What kind of a gun do they have here? They have some sort of a rifle. Doesn't look like the pistol that they had. Um, let's go to the Sketches? The crew? I can't see if they have that sort of a pistol on them. I'm pretty sure that's the captain, right? I don't... I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna say they're the captain. Robert Witterell. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Is this the information that I know about them right now? Unknown and officer. Or is that just one of these unknown people that wasn't on the manifest? I don't entirely understand. Hmm. Let's go with the captain for now. We'll see if the game gets angry at me or something. So there's not much point in looking at blurry people on here, right? You don't even have the opportunity to identify them if they're blurry. So it's just this one. 
If it's just this one, then is it the person that died that I'm able to identify now? Okay, hold on. They seem to have a mustache and a goatee. I think. So. Yeah, that's this person, which I believe is the captain based on the dialogue. I just wonder why I don't have the opportunity to identify this person. Or that person. Is it because... It might be because they weren't mentioned in the dialogue. Maybe because the captain was specifically mentioned. Maybe that's why I'm able to identify them? Um, is this the dialogue? Yeah, Captain, open the door. Yeah, Captain is the only person who is mentioned. Huh. Okay, so this happens... Right there. Okay, so then this was their destination, I believe, right? If they were this close to there. If it's the end, then... I don't think this would be their destination. Probably. I mean, this is where they were supposed to go. That's not to say that that's where they actually went. Okay, I believe my identification is correct. Let's leave. That's so cool looking. I love the sound design. You look at the body in that little clink of the flick of the pocket watch opening. So great. All the sounds of the creaking wood and the water. And the wind. Oh, I forgot I can zoom in, by the way. I totally forgot that's a thing. Oh. Oh, I just noticed something really cool. Oh, that is so cool. Okay, you know how in a lot of games, when you go up or down stairs, it, you, like, you go the same speed as if you're walking on a flat surface? Basically, the stairs are treated as if they're kind of just like a, a ramp, as if there's like a flat plane over the edge of every single one of the steps, and you're just walking up a ramp, and it goes to the same speed? That's not how it is here. You slow down a lot as you're taking the steps. You can hear the sound as well as see everything go slower. That is really cool. What is that? It's in the water? So that's like locked. Am I going to be finding keys or anything like that? Oh. Oh, wait, this is... Is this open now because I saw the death? Hmm. Oh, I just noticed something else really cool. Can I... Uh, hmm. Oh, it closes automatically if I get away from it. Okay, check this out. They have a thing where your hand automatically starts to reach towards a thing you can interact with just by getting near it, like this. And that already looks super good. But also, it's independent from the left hand. So, like, I can have the pocket watch out and go here. Look at that. That is so good. Yeah, there's nothing in here. Ooh. A lot more bodies in here. There's a lot of knives on the floor. 
that a spear? Table's been overturned. Struggle, obviously. Some shoes there. Because their feet don't exist anymore. That one has a hat. Is that a hat? It's hard to tell. I should probably just go into the the view to see what happened. Man, look at that lighting. This game's really good. It's really, really good. Yep, that definitely was being used as a spear. They got a good stab into the shoulder of the captain. The captain... There's the pistol over there, so this person must have knocked the pistol out of their hands. But now the captain has a knife and they just cut their throat. Gosh, that music's good. So that person... This is just a little bit forwards in time, of course. That person that was shot in the previous memory is now just dead on the ground. There was there was one other person waiting out here next to this person. That's probably who this person is. Who is this and how did they die? Where are they? Must be in here someplace. And then the captain says they're at the bottom of the sea. And then the other person says that's a lie. And then there's a struggle and the captain slices their throat. Yes, previously. Oh, no, I didn't mean to close that. Um, Here they said... Talking about opening the door and said, lest we break it down and take more than those shells. So, I think the thing they were searching for, that the captain said are at the bottom of the sea, is the shells. Where are they? Must be near someplace. They're at the bottom of the sea. Yep, corpse is right there. Unknown soul. Met an unknown fate. This person's face appears blurred throughout the book. This blurring indicates that you don't yet have sufficient information to determine their identity. Their fate may be known and can be entered now. Trying to name them while their face is blurred would be unproductive. Okay. Carry on and pay attention. Faces will become unblurred when the information necessary to identify them has been revealed in some way. Well, if their throat is cut, I think I can pretty confidently say I know their fate. Oh, geez. I have to pick the specific cause of death? Some of these have... Some of these have sub... Details, like shot by an arrow, cannon, or gun. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. They were eaten, electrocuted, killed by a sword. No, it wasn't. It knifed. They were knifed. Let's just make sure there isn't one that fits better. Speared, spiked, strangled, struck. No, definitely knifed by an unknown attacker. No, they, they were known. That's the captain. Oh, what is this? I can say unknown attacker. I can say foreign enemy or beast. Is there going to be a beast aboard the ship at some point? Anyway, was knifed by Captain Robert Witterell. Oh, 
There's always like the faintest, tiniest chance that the body I just looked at wasn't this body, I guess, and that they survived this horrible neck wound. I don't think so. And the captain was stabbed right in the shoulder, but I don't think that's a mortal wound. Probably not. So I can't influence... Whoa. Holy shit. Glad I came back here. That's the person that was running upstairs before when they were trying to get in the front door. So they weren't really running away. It looks like they're running to get in the back. So they're jumping down. It kind of looks like they're falling into the water, but no, this is obviously planned. Still got the knife in their teeth. That's probably the other body. And, yeah, when I'm in a memory, it looks like I can't, like, open doors or anything. I can only look. There's the spear they were stabbed with. So that person, bleeding to death very rapidly, of course. Captain used the spear that they were stabbed with. I guess they like ripped it out of their shoulder, which you can see is bleeding. Um, oh. I guess the person, this person back here, stabbed the captain in the back while that was happening. And then the captain then used the spear from the shoulder to just whack him in the head. Damn, Captain... Captain's taking a lot of... wounds. I don't know much about human anatomy. I don't know if that blade there would puncture some vital organ. I'm not sure. So we don't know their name, but we definitely know what happened to them. But who's to say that that whack was lethal? I guess the fact that there's a body there says that, doesn't it? Doesn't, but maybe the whack itself didn't kill them. What if they were whacked and then stabbed or... I don't know. I, I think I'm just supposed to go with what I just saw and not overthink it, probably. Don't have sufficient, sufficient information. Huh, you can select try anyway, that's interesting. Please explain, is that just the same? Yeah, just the same explanation why it's blurred. So, fate. They were... Clubbed? Clubbed sounds right. Knifed, poisoned, shot, spear. They weren't spear, they were hit with a spear, but not with the sharp end. Oh, struck. Oh, the wing tail or hooves? Never mind. Yes. Clubbed. By Captain Robert Witterell. Hmm. We'll go up here. Just make sure there's nothing I'm missing. Nope. Ah, and that opened this. The body just in the bed? They died in their sleep? There's a pistol right there. What 
wonder if that one's the captain. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. I certainly have. This game is freaking awesome. Oh my god. I, I'm not sure how to say exactly what I like about it. Well, okay. Amazing sound design. The art style is interesting and executed brilliantly. I'm really intrigued by the story. I'm really intrigued by the mechanics that allow me to piece together the story. Like, I just want to piece everything together. I want to be a detective. It's so fun to be a detective. Also, I just realized that this door, that's now been opened because, I guess, because we watched uh, a memory, looks different from everything else. It's got, like, fractured lines instead of clean lines. You see that? It's weird. It's, like, distorted. Alright, so, hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.